same as those ones. So now, when you are married, and this one feels like this is what he has to do. You as a partner, something. Like that. You know, there are times where I go to pray. If I come back early, my wife will say, "What happened? Why today you came back so early?" Can you see that? I'm forced now to go back and pray because I've got a pillar that supports me in the type of work that I need to, I need to do. We cannot be the same. Others, they must be on the pulpit. They, they talk too much. <laughs> no Holy Spirit. Because we're not the same. You know, it's what they're called for. They are, they are called to talk. So there are others that when they stand there, the Spirit of God must start to manifest every way. Can you see that? You know uh, why Jesus was hated by people? It is because he started to do things that no one has ever done. So now, we must not be comfortable with the name of saying we have Jesus, whereas there's no evidence of Jesus on us. Tell this when he started in the church in Dallas, I said to him, people are living, let them live. When Charlie started, we were very few. Now we are thousands and thousands and thousands. Can you see that? And the vision that a man is given, you, Mama, as a wife, as support, support. No matter what, just support. Because you don't know what maybe what your partners will see, what you know. On the other side you find you cannot see that. So now you support your wife. If you love your wife, you treat her in a very beautiful way. But do not forget the mandate you are given. You see that? Yeah. Do not forget. One day my wife, she said to me, if tomorrow you wake up, you say, you're no longer a pastor, I'll divorce you. And she said, I have married a man that I know he fear God. Maintain that. I said, I'll do that. So now you people, I want you to support each other. Pray for one another. And I believe Jesus will help. My wife, she has been preaching, preaching for a long time. I heard you say she preaches in prophetic ministries. It's good. It's good. It's very good. You know, because if you preach, you must also have a revelation about people. Because sometimes you might be preaching to people that they have a revelation about you, which is danger to you. <laughs> <laughs> You hear that? Come here, Roman. Come here. If I stand here, you stand here. You are able to see through me, and I can see through you. It means you are the one who is powerful. Because the issue of the ministry, even if we just only talk, there's there's demonic spirits involved. Can you see that? So many spirits that are turning around, turning around. You saw the man we prayed for in, uh, in Atlanta. Did you see that? I did. You saw that? The big yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah, that was pretty well. So now, he said he received prayers everywhere. Mm. Mm. No one could help him. But look when he left Atlanta. He was like a gentleman. <laughs> so, big gentleman. He was big. So now, <laughs> I'll be laying my hands on you. But I also want your wife to pray. Or else the attacks will come. And they're not going to be good. Because any man who stands or any woman who stands on the pulpit, they must spend time with God. Because it's not about talking. You know, a, a, a calling is not only on the pulpit. Even when you get home, the calling continues. Because you are dealing with different types of spirits. Someone is looking at you like this. 
you say, Jesus, Jesus, then they are ready to attack you. You can't see that. So now, let's take this to another level. You will be praying, she must also pray. Or if now she, she, she doesn't want to pray, miss you, it would be good to sit down. And I've seen so many pastors that they have been destroyed because of the pulpit. So now, prayer must be your way from here. And may the Lord be with you. Mm -hmm. Can I pray? Thank you, Lord. Jesus.